Hello and welcome to Refuse. As always, I'm Plume Noir and Pain Week continues. Now one thing I would just want to get out there. If I heard a knock at my front door and I open the door and I look down and I see a package sitting on the porch with no return address. And if I were to open that package and see that there was no note, no letter, nothing inside, just these three comics, I would look down at Butters and say, we got to go. Just just drop everything, get in the car. We need to leave right now. <laughs> because that's, that's not a good sign. You know, if, if there was someone I really did not like, I would do that. I'd put these three comics in a package and just send it to them. No explanation, no return address. Just, it, it would be a sign. <laughs> so, I already took a look at Maneaters. Um... And you know, I'm, I'm numb to Chelsea Kane. She, she can't hurt me anymore. Which leaves us with Goddess Mode and Hex Wives. Um, I have to work a double tomorrow. So I think I'm going to take Hex Wives in to work with me. And maybe I can take a look at this in the lab. So we'll put that aside. That leaves us with our favorite five guys. Zoe Quinn. Uh, Zoe Quinn and Robbie Rodriguez. Did I even say that right? My voice is cutting out here. Yes. Now, before I even go on to what is pretty much the flagship of uh, Vertigo's relaunch, let's pull up another Vertigo comic. This one from last week, High Level. God, that is such a horrible logo. Ah! Um, I haven't had a chance to read this yet. Um, but, you know, if you were in the comic shop and going through and you see the Vertigo thing and you saw these two, you know, issues, they just came out a week from each other, you know, I don't think, I, I think you could be forgiven for thinking this is the same character. It's like, oh, wait, is, is this the same character? Is this goddess mode? That's her name, right? She's in, is she guest starring? And maybe this is high level and, you know, she's guest starring in the book and, yeah, I know in the first issue, she dyed her hair, I think it was blue, and she went to pink, and her captions changed to go with it for some reason. Um, they're both kind of weird, dystopian, she's Oracle of Garbage, and she is a bounty hunter, garbage collector thing, uh, with the same hair. You know, is there anyone higher up at Vertigo that would see this and say, hey, Maybe we need to make these characters a little bit different. Can you, you know, maybe go green or something? You know, maybe not have the shape. I, I just had to point that out. It's really weird when you put them side to side like that. You know, different art styles, but it looked like it could almost be the same character. So let's get this out of here. Um, I'm going to try and get through this really, really quickly. Um, because I have the problem with this one that, not a good sign... I don't really remember what happened in the last issue before opening the comic. The only thing I remembered was the art, which was so bad, especially the coloring. It just was, uh, it hurt my eyes. And I think, you know, and that was like that in the previous uh, uh, issues as well. But I think they finally said to the uh, colorist, you have the whole rainbow. You don't need to use it all at once. You know, maybe the pinks and purples don't need to be sitting right on top of the yellows and oranges. So this issue is not as hard on the eyes. If there's one good thing I can say about it, it would be that. One good thing, your eyes will not bleed after reading this. However, Zoe Quinn is in the Claremont School of Let's Fill Everything with Dialogue Boxes and word balloons, and they take different shapes. You know, we have that, we have the regular ones, we get that stupid group chat, which I really wish they'd get rid of. So let's go ahead, I'm going to try and get through this really quickly, because I'm four minutes in already, and I, you probably hear my voice is cutting out, so I'm going to try and keep going until my voice goes, or at least try and save it, so. All right, you know, it's Starting to starting to come back to me. Um, she's in Azroth, the kind of cyber world, and she sees her father, who at the end of the last issue told her, you know, to stop what she's doing. And he tells her, "I'm so proud of you for following in my footsteps, Cassandra, but they're about to lead you off of a cliff. I took the job at her Metacor for the same reasons you did. I thought if I played their game, I could borrow their power to build a better world, but I underestimated them." The people who hold all the cards will never deal you a winning hand. And so, yeah, he's trying to warn her, trying to stop. Um, tells her that, uh, 
you know, pick your battles, baby girl. There's danger on the horizon. And the connection gets severed. Now, I'm remembering, okay, she's with the other oracles. They're carrying her comatose body. So they're back at Titania's bar, the sad dad. God, that's such a dumb name. And, uh, so, yeah, they're talking about the predicament when, oh, oh, look at that eye. Look at the si silly. And she suddenly jumps up and yells, don't go. Look at that. I really hope there's supposed to be shadowing there and that's not just her neck right there. Uh, so the art, it's Robbie Rodriguez. It's not great. Um, the, it's mostly the coloring that was really bad. And is it just me? Or is Mary Pinker in this issue? I remember her having more of a Caucasian flesh tone, but she seems very pink in this issue. Maybe I'm just misremembering, or maybe I had after images of all the other colors burned onto my retinas that, yeah. So she's screaming, you know, my dad, I saw him. He's in a coma, but he's in there. He knows something, but we got cut off. I have to go back, but I don't know where. And Mary says, I don't understand. And Cassandra yells in her face, He was right in front of me and I couldn't do anything to save him. So Mary calms her down. Um, and says, Breathe, just breathe. Whatever is going on, we'll face it as a team. I broke my promise to keep you safe once, but it won't ever happen again. She creepily grins and says, You're right. Sorry I freaked out. I'm still figuring out how to hold, hand, handle this whole not being alone thing. This page is very interesting. We'll come back to that for two reasons. So basically we get kind of an info dump where um, Cassandra is filling the others in on how she uh, um, you know, got promoted at work. And, uh, and the person I took over uh, definitely was unaware of the magic. Um, or aware of the magic. He left some cryptic data ghosts. In between Azoth and the analog, Azoth, Azoth, what I keep calling it, whatever the cyber world, um, along with a warning, something's coming. I don't think it's possible that he knows something about the company that Paris doesn't. Paris, who is also the acting head of uh, the uh, Hermeticor. Uh, it's not only possible, it's certain. I confronted him, but his mind went blank when I mentioned Azroth. We already know the truth face of our enemy. And then her Cassandra's necklace does this little thing and, you know, Antony the, and the rest of the demons. So, yeah, and then we see this little image and it's hissing too. And it's, uh, she's connected to it maybe. It's her dark side. You know, in the first issue I thought they were related somehow. But anyway, you were going to see this weird thing with their magic powers or whatever. Um... So, yeah, they're, they've had it rough, and, you know, Cassandra says she's in no mood for celebrating when uh, Tiger Bombshell, <laughs> I'm trying to remember their name, says, you got to celebrate all the victories, no matter how small, how small they are. Um, there are too many defeats not to. So they each have their little toast that they uh, use. And I wonder if they did make Mary Pinker so you can really tell who is who, you know, the different, you know, Multicolor skin tones here because yeah, that's really pink. I don't remember Mary being that almost, you know, first degree burn pink. So then we see what they do afterwards. You know, uh, uh, Tiger, Tiger Bombshell, whatever her name is, goes home to her wife and kids. Mary uh, listens to music. Uh, Titania's meditating. And then Cassandra. Let's bring this up here. Huh, feels like my brain feels like it's eating itself. Why didn't I just tell them about my dad, or the coma, or the psyche? Wait, 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 what? Hell, dad was right there and I didn't even tell him I don't... Uh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold, hold the phone here. Why didn't I just tell them about my dad, or the coma? Let's turn back a couple pages, shall we? My dad, I saw him. He was in a coma. He's in a coma and he was in there. He knows something. And he we got cut off. He was right in front of me. I couldn't do anything to save him. But you just told them. You you, you did. Just two pages ago. Zoe. Zoe. Editors. Wake up, people. 
okay, um, I could almost forgive it, you know, this is Zoe's first, you know, uh, you know, comic writing assignment. I can almost forgive if she wrote something in the first issue, and then four issues later, um, you know, forgets that she did this. She just did this two pages ago. I guess technically three pages. Um, these pages are really kind of weird. Yeah, she just told them about. She just did that. She just told them. <sighs> breathe, breathe. And I'm going to go through the rest of this really quickly um, because I I, I kind of stopped right there. I mean, I and I kept reading it, paying attention, but that's when I was like, okay, really, and my mind kind of checked out. So, um, Cassandra goes back to her orientation because now she's in a new job. Um, she keeps getting promoted upwards. Is this, this, this is Zoe Quinn's biography, isn't it? And she really is basing this on herself. You know, her failures just propel her upwards. I wish we all had that luck. So, find out that Psyche is having problems. Um, she, there's, uh, these various, um, you know, intrusions going on, and so when she pulls up the system log, and she's showing uh, uh, Cassandra about the system failures, you know, Cassandra sees the little magic symbol around it, uh, Psyche, what the hell are these? I am unable to view that data myself, because any threats in the system are immediately neutralized, along with their records. Okay, at first, as an IT guy, I'm like, wait a minute. You destroy the logs. That usually means that, you know, whatever protection you're using is actually compromised. But we find out, no, it's really supposed to be doing that. That's on purpose. You know, uh, when she asks, why can I? Then apparently uh, the second psyche appears that uh, starts yelling at her, um, talking about the system. Probably her dad uh, sent in a message. Um, these threats aren't threats to you. They're threats to her metacore. Anything that could challenge the company's dominion is erased, and they aren't even aware it's happening. So uh, Cassandra decides she's going to hack into the system to get more information, and that's when her choker literally starts choking her. Psyche, who is now back to normal, says, Miss Price, you're in violation of the terms of your service. Your prior violations of company protocol were tolerated due to your low status. But your new position carries significantly more power, and with it, si significantly steeper penalties for its misuse. As this is your first offense, the penalty is a three-day suspension. Consider it a warning. Uh, I would just like to say that that's like the opposite of most every company I've ever seen. The lower-level people tend to get punished more, you know, um, for any type of uh, indiscretions. Where the higher people, you know, they tend to get more warnings. Um, basically, I'm sure this is just a way to, you know, take Cassandra's uber hacking ability off the table because that was such an important thing to her, her character, but, you know, it, it's to get that, basically that power. We're going to fo focus on the magic, which we find out these pages are really kind of hard. Um, the world is based on magic. Now, here's the other part. Remember a few pages ago, pages ago when we talked about, uh, Mary would always be there. So Cassandra reaches out to the oracles. And it's kind of the goofy, you know, uh, it's supposed to be like a millennial group chat. It's supposed to be all silly. <laughs> um, you know, oh, the monster. So when Cassandra reaches out, they all blow her off. Okay, uh, Tiger Bombshell, she has a wrestling match that's been rescheduled for this evening, so she can't meet up with her. Cassandra wants to meet up tonight, in person, face-to-face, -face, uh, in Titania's sad dad bar where the signal's being jammed, um, instead of talking, you know, via their group chat. Um, when she reaches out to Mary, Mary kind of blows her off, um, you know. If you fear for, fear for your safety, don't tell me. I'm looking into the matter as we speak anyhow. No, you can't. I wasn't asking, Cassandra. It's lines like this that don't really flow very well. Um, and remember what she said about, you know, always being there and taking care of her. Yeah, she blows her off. And, oh, look at that. Paris shows up. Ah, the acting head of her Metacore. He's there with Paris, uh, with uh, Mary, huh? 
So then we get this little brief side story into Titania, who we find out was a content auditor. Imagine, um, I just keep calling it Azeroth, that's easier, I think that's, you know, like, like the video game, Azoth or whatever. Um, we find out that she was a content auditor, which imagine like Google, where, you know, you search for things and, you know, things get flagged. You know, if you're looking up how to make a bomb or something, you know, they send it to the authorities. But they have premium subscribers that when they would do something illegal, she couldn't do anything about that. So she would take that and secretly leak that information out uh, so that they would get busted. Well, it turned out that she, you know, got busted for that herself, and yeah, that's her tragic backstory. So, when uh, when uh, Cassandra comes to her, it looks like she's going to be thrown out again. Um, she told me to murder anyone who asked to come up, aside from the pizza delivery guy. And Titania says, you're not pizza. None of us could live up to expectations like that. <sighs> I guess there's our food reference. Eh? Eh. So she says, you know, move your hand and then slams the door. So when Cassandra walks away, um, turns out that she's like, you're lucky that Bill says you're cool. Bill would never. What? You know, my roommate, we're in a group text with Bigfoot. Try and keep up. Uh, whatever. So Titania does bring her in. Um, and I'm going to skip so much of this because they, um, it, it, it's stupid. It's it's trying to do the whole sisterhood and don't really like her. They all have different things. Um, you know, she says that she didn't know. Uh, you know, she didn't have anyone to live for. You know, she didn't have a cause. Um, you know, but she didn't want to go back. She's basically fueled by spite. So they decide that they're going to use their powers to talk to Psyche to get the real information with whatever so the neat thing is we do find out it's explicitly stated because i felt that there was no consistency in previous issues we find out it's finally stated that azoth the cyber world and all that is all built upon magic there is definitely magic this isn't like the third matrix movie where suddenly neo had powers in the real world but you know, i have my theories about that as well but Let's go back to the um, the Matrix thing in just a moment. Um, we find out that they're uh, putting the people into comas um, that are in the world. Huh. What does that remind me of? But, 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 um, what they find out is that, uh, you know, I served as a medium between two worlds, regulating and protecting each from affecting the other. My learning model was tweaked to conceal all information on Azoth's existence and to process magic users as they awakened. So, yeah, uh, if their abilities were judged uh, as assets to Hermeticor, I am forced to harvest them and incorporate them into my system leaving nothing but an empty shell behind, their minds used for spare processing power. Now, you know, I just made, you know, dot .hack. I mentioned in the very first issue how much it reminded me of dot .hack. Now this, if you've seen the original Matrix, you know, the first movie, you know that the robots were keeping humans as batteries. That was not what was originally intended. Back in the late 90s, a little bit of a different time, going back 20 years ago, um... It was not, the people were not being kept in pods as batteries because humans would not put out much energy that way. They were actually being kept as a neuro network. All the humans linked together basically as a supercomputer. Now, they were concerned, the movie makers, I put up the executive producers or whoever, were concerned that the regular movie audience would not understand what a neural network was. But now, here we are 20 years later, we can, you know, times have moved up, and that's what they're doing. You know, basically, they're using people who have the magic abilities to use them for processing power, and oracles are pretty much left over. So, yeah, now Zoe Quinn is ripping off the Matrix. It would probably be easier to figure out what she's not ripping off. Um, and I'm sure there's stuff in here that I've missed. So... Yeah, so they, they get 
found out, and then we go into the big battle, and I'm going to stop here, but I want to point out one more thing. Uh, remember what Mary said? You know, can we stop? All the people are fighting between each other, all the oracles, so she's getting them to stop. You know, I'm sorry I've been a bit unreasonable. I just don't want anything to happen to you. Day or night, cab fare or monsters, remember? Now, I bring this up because in a capable writer's hand, remember she said this in the other issue, you know, basically she would always be there to help Cassandra. But just earlier, she was blowing her off, you know, saying she was looking at things on her own while she was with Paris. And now she's back to being there day and night. A capable writer would use this as character definition. It would twig the reader in that not to trust her. You know, don't believe what she says. You know, she's maybe her attack she had uh, corrupted her. Um, that this is actually on purpose. Uh, that she's that they're showing that she's not actually living up to what she says. But with with uh, Zoe Quinn, I don't believe it. I don't. I, I I don't have the faith that she's that clever enough to be setting up the character to say one thing and act another way to give subtle hints as to her true purpose, her true motives, or to signal that something's going on. Um, not after we just had that whole thing about where she's talking about her dad in the coma and then wishes she had talked about her dad in the coma. Yeah, right there. Just a couple pages later. This this book is poorly written garbage, to be honest. Uh, you know, there were some theories that uh, somebody was helping her with this, that, uh, that there was some ghost writing. And maybe the first issue there was, but I'm telling you, if there was, this, there's not anymore. This is bad. Oh, but at least it's not as painful on the eyes. And then something happens at the end of the issue, which, of course, something that Cassandra does goes horribly, horribly awry. And that's why I think this is definitely, Cassandra is definitely a, um, a self-insert. That's what they call it, a self-insert character. You know, Cassandra is Zoe Quinn. And I'm pretty sure of that. You know, uh... You know, sees herself really low, oracle garbage, and keeps failing upwards. She's in over her head. She doesn't understand. The The only thing I will say, two things, you know, now I will say two things, is that, you know, the art, like I said, the, the, the coloring is better. Um, and this, they finally say that it is definitely magic. The world works, you know, it looked like it was going to be just a cyber world, and somehow magic was... Uh, bleeding out the real world. No, it's tech on top of magic. And that's not too terribly um, original either. So, uh, yeah, and apparently the future is being threatened and everything's going to be unraveled and the analog, the real world's going to be affected, and I don't care. I don't care. I'm just waiting for this book to be canceled. Um, here we are, the Vertigo books. You know, they're, they're getting to be almost interchangeable. Uh, where did I put... Uh, the book here. Um, let's talk about the uh, uh, pink-haired, uh, shaved head woman who uh, deals with garbage a lot. Yeah, which one am I talking about? It's both. I'm just teasing. It's both these characters. <laughs> We've already had two books from Vertigo canceled. Uh, one before it even came out. Uh, yeah, and we're getting crap like this. I haven't read this yet. Not officially pain week. This is pre-pain week. So I'm not even going to talk about that. I might even look at that a little bit later in the week here. You know, finally catch up to it. But yeah, Cosmode is garbage. This book is bad. Stay away from this. Do not, do not, do not buy this book. I mean, I just, 6 o'clock, uh, 6 o'clock. Stop rewarding Zoe Quinn. You know, don't be like me. So, anyway, thanks for watching this book's garbage. Tomorrow, I'm going to try and get to Hex Wives. Um, I might have to do a video from my lab, so, yeah, 25 minutes. I've been talking 25 minutes. And that's only because this book is filled with so much crap that, uh, yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you stuck around this long, I will see you tomorrow. And, as always, thanks for watching.